One idea that may sound unlikely was that the universe bounced. It moved from small to large and back again, and just kept doing that forever. In this scenario, the universe had always existed. Whether this was true or not was clearly a fundamental problem, and just what I needed to complete my PhD thesis. In this, I showed that the universe cannot bounce. Instead, it must have begun with the Big Bang. result upset many physicists, but it delighted those religious leaders who believed in an act of creation, for here it seemed was scientific proof. I had shown mathematically that the universe must have had a beginning. My colleagues and I were now waiting for the observational evidence that would prove this to be true. The discovery, when it occurred, was the result of a complete accident. In the United States, two scientists, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were testing a radio receiver built for microwave communication signals when they detected an unknown source of noise. Nobody could work out what it was, but 20 years earlier, Gamow and his colleagues had predicted a similar noise. Penzias and Wilson weren't at all interested in the Big Bang or cosmology and had no idea about Gamow's prediction. They discovered in their antenna uh, a, a, some noise that they couldn't explain. And they worked for many months to try and remove the source of the noise by fixing the joints and cleaning the antenna couldn't get rid of it. Then by chance one of them had a conversation with a cosmologist who was thinking about Gamow's idea and the hot Big Bang and instantly they realized this is what they'd in fact discovered. Gamow and his colleagues had been correct all along. All around us is microwave radiation that comes from the birth of the universe. This discovery was one of the most important in the history of science. We made a great leap towards discovering how the universe began. This is how we think it happened. It started with a big bang. A moment when the universe was thought to have had zero size and to have been infinitely hot. As the universe expanded, its temperature dropped. In some areas, galaxies formed. Within them, smaller clouds of hydrogen and helium gas collapsed to form the first stars. The universe began to fill with light. When the stars burnt up their fuel, they blew up in a tremendous explosion called a supernova. Throwing new elements like oxygen and carbon out into space. The dust from the stars is spread around the universe. It formed the planets, including the Earth. You, me, and even my wheelchair are made of stardust. The Big Bang Theory was incredibly successful at explaining the evolution of the universe. But there was still a problem. It didn't answer the fundamental question. It didn't explain how the universe began. What triggered the Big Bang? For a long time, nobody could think of an answer. 
but then an extraordinary idea was suggested that would take the world of physics by storm and solve the problem. By the 1970s, nearly all scientists agree that the universe must have originated in a Big Bang. But the Big Bang theory left many questions unanswered. Above all, it didn't explain what had started the Big Bang itself. What could make something infinitely small expand into the vast universe we see around us? When the answer came, it struck everyone as elegantly simple. American physicist Alan Guth proposed a solution. Guth was investigating what happened in the first microseconds of the universe. He suggested that the universe expanded at a faster and faster rate. It would have been like the way prices go up and up at an accelerating pace, so Guth called it cosmic inflation. But inflation in the very early universe would have been much greater than anything on Earth. In a fraction of a second, the universe would have expanded to a trillion, trillion, trillion times its size. That's no ordinary expansion. And so the explanation would be no ordinary one either. In Guth's theory, the expansion of the early universe would have been caused by a strange type of matter, which behaved very differently to the ordinary matter we are familiar with. Since the days of Isaac Newton, it has been known that ordinary matter attracts other matter through the force of gravity. This is why things fall to Earth. But the new type of matter behaves in the opposite way. It repels itself 